Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm in Leeds this morning, standing by a bus stop, a Pontefract Lane bus stop. It's early June, it's not that warm actually, it's about 12 um, degrees. It's a bit of a breeze blowing. I'm making a video in the sort of Richmond Hill cross green area this morning and it was a bit of a last minute uh, thing. Um, I was, I'm actually on my way into uh, actually on my way into work but I set off about an hour early. Uh, the city's just there in the distance um, and I was laid in bed at half past four this morning thinking about things like you do well like I do um, and I realized that it was almost 60 years ago this month it would have been June um, 59 years ago to be precise, 1965, I was well, probably about four years old, five years old, um, and I don't have many memories that young really, but this one's very vivid. Um, my mum and dad, we lived out in the suburbs, um, nice little house, little garden, nice schools nearby, nice shops. But my dad was from this area, he hadn't lived there um, very long um, and uh, they decided to start a business down here. They both gave up the jobs uh, and they moved down here and I, I, the reason I was on the bus that morning could easily have been a Sunday morning. The reason I was on the bus um, And walking this um, exact route that I'm now walking from the bus stop with my dad was to go to visit the new business. I don't know why he was going to pick up keys or learn the ropes, sign some papers, who knows. But I distinctly remember being told we were going to see our new home. We came on the bus to a place I'd never been. and. Um, Some of what you see on this video is, is as was back then. Much of it though has, has changed beyond all recognition. It's not really a reminiscing video. I don't do reminiscing, it, it kind of makes me a bit melancholy, although it's hard to be melancholy on a lovely morning like this. But uh, as I say, I don't really do reminiscing. Um, but uh, I thought, well, put me neck. <laughs> 60 years ago, almost today, I got off a bus. Um, I went for a walk with my dear old dad. So I went up, recreate it. As I say, the video hopefully is probably going to be about more than just uh, more than just that. I don't think there's this building was here back then. It's a doctor's doctor's surgery. Looks like it's flats now. Yeah. And we came this way on an earlier video, if you remember the Richmond Hill Railway Tunnel there. That's part of the reason why. 
we've come today is to see Mount St Mary's Church. I'll explain more as we get a bit nearer. Hill Primary School there that was bombed in World War II. Cover that in the other video. And as you walk up here, this whole area would have been full of row upon row of back to back terrace houses that have all gone now. Um, here was a row of terraces, including a pub uh, called the Prospect. And I guess the prospect was the incredible view that you used to get from the, the back of it. You can't see much now, it's been covered with um, undergrowth and what have you. Hey. And, and this side would have been the old newborn Methodist chapel, an old red brick building, had that smell of um, had that smell of old old building. It must have been there since maybe Victorian times, and, and that was demolished. And this modern structure put here, and, and it is still a church, I think. So. Yeah, good for them, because along with pubs, the Bon Methodist Church, along with pubs, they're a, a, a dying breed. Certainly in this area, but all this was uh, the the terraces went um, off to the right, going down the hill. And every one of them had a had a almost every one of them had a shop at the end. <laughs> so these would have been dead straight lines of terraced houses. Some going to a dead end, some with an opening. I'll, I'll come down here because it's a slight deviation from the room I took with my dad. But, I do want to uh, get some footage of Mount St Mary's. I hope I didn't say St Saviour's earlier. There's two churches. I sometimes confuse the names. But this is Mount St Mary's. It's a Roman Catholic church. I um, don't know a great deal about it. There's some controversy about how it closed and was sold and what the artefacts went missing. Um, but the reason I wanted to come, and I've wanted to come now for months, is the fact that it's uh, been sold apparently, and part of it's getting demolished and it's going to be made into flats. So I really wanted to come and uh, see it before. Oh, yeah, that happened. I think it held like more than a thousand people. And it's a magnificent building and it's been empty forever. And it's a real shame. It couldn't have been put to some sort of, if not religious, uh, I'm not a religious person myself, but I do think religious establishments, it can be the heart and soul of the community and it's a real shame. Or if not a church, then certainly some sort of community hub or community centre or cultural centre, it, it would have been incredible, but from what a pal told me, it's, um, it's gone away with a lot of things in Leeds, it's going to be 
going to be housing. If you know anything about its story, then please do let me know. Because I don't know so much myself. I, I never used to come to it from this side. I, I, I don't come to it from the other side. But as I say, I never came here as a church. I think I may have called in on business once or twice. But it's a magnificent building. I think what I do know about um, the church, as I say, there's a, there's a met humble Methodist church there, and there were other churches represented, but the main two big players were the Catholics and the Church of England, and I think this had a large uh, population of uh, people from Ireland, and from what I can gather, the the big church there, and there was St. Patrick's Church near the woodpecker, and they were built for that community. And St. Saviour's, the church I mentioned, was an Anglican church, but that was um, sort of in competition. It, it was, they used to call it High Church, I think, in the Church of England. It was quite similar to the Catholic Church in a lot of ways, and that was there to try and steal some custom but Sussex Street that's one of the original names of the back to back houses in the area as I think was Walter Crescent at the other side oh this is new though I've never actually seen any of this John Sturrock must be some sort of a centre I don't know what that is the housing office, oh it's still there, just there, the housing office. It still is the housing office. But uh, this is original and opposite here, on, on that side of the road, was a similar set of shops. And that had the co-op in and I tell people before we had, um, before we had supermarkets you had a shop on every corner and then you'd have a local co-op which would be for the more interesting items that your shops didn't stock but this was the Yorkshire Bank um, again it's flats I think on a vape house um, and, and the building there, this is 1903 at the top, and the doorway number 21 or is it further down oh, that, that, that's part of the part of the block I'm looking for the St. Saviour's Church um, St. Saviour's Church Hall which is in the next block down Bethlehem Centre. That has rooms above. That's now the, the Bethlehem Boxing Club there. And, it, and it, everything, everywhere you went, there was little parades of shops like this with all the shops that you need needed. And again going down here, there's terrace houses going off on, on each side and shops on some of the corners. I did want to come up here, I feel a little bit cheeky. Um, but, but this little courtyard area here it still exists. It doesn't really, does it? It's one of the oldest, um, it was one of the oldest little areas around here. You see the doors going up the steps. It, 
the whole area was little courtyards and um, the whole area was little little courtyards and streets and I think that's one of the oldest I'm not sure how much of it exists but yeah I remember coming into the co-op on the right there and um, my mum would get some six rashers of bacon or whatever and they'd put the big lump of bacon on the on the cutting machine and slice it off, wrap it in paper. Um, we seem to come so far so we moved so quickly to this plastic disposable edge. I'm coming up here, this is Long Close Lane. I'm coming up here just to like I said the, the areas filled with disused churches, disused pubs. It was one that had been here for I think for hundreds of years actually. It was called the Hampton. Um, this was it. The fish and chip shop at the back of it on the street. The door was there where number one is. Not a bad little pub actually. Probably going to try and document all the pubs around here. The Conservative Club was just a little bit further up. Yeah, there was a back door there. Conservative Club was up there where the to let signs are just just there. Anyway, onwards. So there's a little deviation there, but I'm back on my route now. As I say, I, for a lot of, I think, truthfully now. <laughs> For a lot of my life, I was a little bit resentful when, because as I got older, I knew where we'd come from and I knew where we'd come to. And it was a real shock. I found school quite difficult. Um, all through school, really. No, it wasn't until I got to about 14 that I even started to enjoy school. Um, so I was a bit resentful that they'd moved here, but I'm not now, because I now realise that people make decisions in life. They often, more more often than not, they do it for the right reason, because they want to improve the, their life. Now we can't go up the street where we went, so we walked down here. If you could imagine, there were terraces going up every street. There was a shop on every corner, and probably about there where that 20 sign is would have been our street, and we would have turned up. But I think we'll have to cut through this new, well, call it new social housing. It was built in the 70s. Yeah, I think the 70s was probably the last time any social housing was built here in the UK by city councils. Maybe not, but it, it feels that way. We haven't had any for such a long time. But anyway, um, so yeah, I was a bit resentful, but but I'm not. People make decisions uh, for the right reasons most of the time, and my parents did. Um, and it's shaped who I am growing up around here. And I'm proud of where I grew up and I'm proud of what I, what I do now and um, and who I am I suppose so this these were all railway houses I think I got told they were built by the railway these were back to back houses our, our back to back houses went down there our, our little business was just about there on the other side of the of the road um, 
but the back-to-back -back houses that were there were built in like the 1850s so by the 1970s when these were put up there were already slums these I think were built in the 19 maybe 30s something like that so this was my school playing fields and the school now is just there but the school I went to was about 100 metres across there but from day one I started that year, we came here in the June and then I started in the September and from day one I would walk to school from there up this road and, and, and then into school but as I say this is all changed this, this was just all playing fields This, when my dad was young up to about the 50s and 60s I don't know what this used to be it used to be a quarry or something but I've seen pictures of it and it's just an area of dirty um, allotments um, this little banking still here though we used to play down here just realised the, the fence is covered in, in this school um, <laughs> in the school mottos and what have you and it's a real shame because I don't have any good memories of that primary school apart from swimming lessons it, it was a well I've talked to people since we went there and some people say it was okay but a lot of what's on here um the values and what have you, they weren't there, um, they weren't there when I went there, so, so the reason I've come down here um, is, uh, there's no cinema at the end, <laughs> easy road cinema, and I remember scratting about in the, it was on this site, and I remember scratting about in the rubble as a child, and I found a load of um, posters, you know, from what they used to put up on the advertising. And I so wish I would have kept them. My dad told me it was called the Bug Hutch, because you'd actually see the cockroaches and stuff crawling about in there um, obviously the building's not there anymore but yeah lost cinemas of Leeds easy road cinema there I'm trying to keep the editing to a minimum and so I've been sort of criticised for the videos just rambling on and being long and sprawling but that's the effect I'm trying to achieve especially on these city walks it's just a walking tour uh, where I suppose I do reminisce a little bit but we seek out old buildings and we seek out old places that's the idea. Um, so by the nature of them, they are a bit rambling, but let me know what you think. Try and be kind, but I don't really bothered if you are or not. But, uh, this again was, there's a an old railway line just that way, 50 yards, and this was terraces all the way going up to the railway line. And I'm going to make a video about the railway one day. There's still some old shops here, and there's a, a ghost sign. Wood, Milne, Rubber Heels. I don't know, see if you can make it out. Looks like there's two, doesn't it? All these fisheries. For a lot of years, this was Bob's news agents, and yes, the fellow was called Bob. 
Uh, but you can still see the couples there. So going up, if you look on the Leodis website, if you put, uh, which is run by Leeds City Council Libraries, and you put in May Terrace, you may well still see the street. Terraced houses going off to each side, and then about 30 yards, the big wooden boards where the railway ran, and then at the other side of the railway, the Glencoes, which again were terraces going away from the railway. Another ghost town. It's a long time since I've been down here. A long time. I'm guessing this shop at some point might have been a, a, a cobbler's because soles, heels, the, the ghost signs seem to be to do with shoe repairs. And I never knew what this place was, but it's really old. It was the um, ATS, it was a it was a tyre company for a long time. And there's MOT specialists. But the city, well, it's got so close. So here was a little, we call them ginnels in, in this area. Well, you call them where you are, it's a cut through. Um, this one had a little tunnel on it um, that the railway ran over. Um, let me know in the comments what you call them where you are, but I think around here they're called ginnels. And it used to carry on at the other side. Um, my dad got knocked over here when he was about 12. Um, Lovely morning, fresh air, and a strong smell of cannabis wafting on the breeze, and it's not from me. So the footpath used to go up here, and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you when we get through all this housing. Um, it takes us basically back to that old parade of shops uh, that we were looking at earlier. This is an old warehouse on the, on the left and part of the reason I wanted to come down here was to see this place I didn't even know it was still here and it's a bit iconic really it was the Spring Close pub even got the old Tetley sign still on it look at that <laughs> <laughs> it was great, it was like somebody's house. I had about three rooms and uh, had a, like a central bar. It's a real shame I can't see in the, in the windows. I know. Drinking is a whole other story that um, I, might, I might go into one day, but not today. Suffice to say, that's where I became a regular drinker at the age of. <coughs> we would come on an evening, not in one evening a week, because we had weekend jobs. So we'd, we'd come out and play darts and dominoes and such like. Uh, but we also come on at lunchtime when we're at school. Uh, and often the English teachers would be in one room and all the pupils would be in another room. Another room. I mean, it's outrageous, isn't it, in this day and age? But it was a flipping good school. I have no complaints. Not the high school, the primary school. I've got a lot of complaints. Uh, it was an awful, violent and mean spirited establishment in, in my year. But we'll leave it there. I'm just walking up here because there was another pub that we 
looks like it's uh, looks like it's gone. Hello. This was the pub I got my first job in. And this had been here forever. Hello. It's called the U tree. Um been here a really long time. No. So yeah, this was the car park and the pub was on here. It was a Whitbed pub, most of the pubs around here were Tetlis pubs. And so I managed to get a job just, just before my 18th birthday collecting glasses um, at a rugby club. It was a real eye opener. I was a quiet lad, I didn't been exposed to much, but I started to get exposed to plenty uh, working in there. Um, sorry, it might all seem a bit disjointed and a bit rushed, but I, uh, I do have to go to work soon. Uh, I've been awake since half past four, so I'm not thinking properly. But that's St Saviour's there, which was built in direct competition. That's a Pusey church, if you know anything about churches, I don't know a right lot, but it's um, highly regarded, I think. There's a movement, uh, and that there is uh, St Saviour's. And this here, this whole area, was just terrace houses. This is all part of the. It's all courtyards and alleyways. And I think they rationalised it a bit and built the, built the terraced houses. And the veterans buildings so this was um, demolished way way before I was ever born um, the use of houses called prefabs at the end of the war the second world war I think there was a big housing shortage in the country and they built these small single storey prefabricated um, houses this whole area including the sports pitches hello including the sports pitches was um, uh, was prefabs who's one of my dad's uncles used to live there so we used to visit um, in the 60s. I'm heading over to St Saviour's to see what I can see and quickly back up to St Mary's and then uh, it'll be time to go to work for 10 hours. Blimey. Not sure how much of St Saviour's we'll see because I think the the lodge buildings are now private, so last time I came the gates were shut. But it is magnificent. 
you used to see it from all over Leeds, but unfortunately, there's huge high rises going up everywhere. What's got my car stolen here on Good Friday of all days? Yeah. Same ride, does it? Shame I'm locked. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know. And just along here was Cavalier Pub, where these apartments are. These were the Clergy houses, the old vicarage. Well, the school's got an extension, and then there was a, an old building here where the white car is. It was called the old bank, and it was a club. And I'm guessing. It was an old bank. Not really a witch bank. So we're heading that way, back towards Mount St Mary's. But we're gonna just drop down. And this is pretty much why the area gets its name, the bank. This is the north bank of the River Air, basically, um, and at this side, at the south side, it's it's not so steep. But at this side, there's like a little mini escarpment. So this whole area, pretty much, that we've walked, uh, this lower end anyway, was known as the bank. Uh, it was sort of Harsh living conditions, I think. There are some old tenements at the bottom here, facing onto East Street. And this was always a park, as long as I can remember. Um, Once ventured down here when I was about ten with some friends, and we got chased all the way home by some some local kids. I wanted to put a dampener on the morning, but I think it's going to start raining. Yeah, the tenements were there, I think, or oh, maybe there. Um, I mean, East Street is all but gone now. I, I, mean, I am going to do a walk one day from the bottom to the top of where East Street was because it's an interesting area, but I don't really have much time today. But... Uh, we did come this way on one of the earlier videos on the on the bus and I have had to make a bit of a detour because the gates to the church were padlocked which I suppose is under understandable because if you live there then you just get all kinds of yeah, the wells in the grounds I wanted to show you this, this was part of St Saviour's here. This was a school, I think there were nuns lived here. Um, as I said, what I was saying about there were community hubs, as were the pubs, as were the shops. Um, So 
first boys mill on there, but I always thought that was part of the I always thought that was part of the part of the church. Anyway, can't get in here either. I used to be able to walk through here when I was a kid. If I felt so strongly about it, I guess I could climb the fence. I don't feel that strongly about it. But what a magnificent entrance to a church. And this was the churchyard, and as a child, I remember, I'm sure I remember gravestones in here. I'm sure I do. And there's a cholera pit, that's what I wanted to show you. I think the church was built in the like 1840s, something like that. And as I say, this was an area of poor sanitation, poor health care, and working people until they, they dropped, basically. Um, and there was a big cholera outbreak. And it's an awful expression, I think, but they dug a cholera pit somewhere, I think, over there and uh, filled it with filled it with bodies but it's a big old churchyard thank goodness for it because if it wasn't it would be uh, it would be more of it'd be more of that wouldn't it I have some happy memories of this uh, this church I'll have to come back through the day when the uh, when the gates were open and have a look around. The last time I was here was about 20 years ago and there were two guys in this tree drinking cider. It was very surreal. I didn't think I could see them, but I could. <laughs> they were drinking cider. Uh, strange. But yeah, this was a footpath for people to walk up the hill. And to go to church. And I wonder if you know about Boyd's Mill. Let me know, because I didn't think it was a mill. I thought it was a, a an old school. Anyway, I think it's nearly time for work. So, and the rain's coming down. So I'll get back to you in a few minutes. The city centre down there, the parish church in the distance. As I say, I have plans to walk up East Street from the parish church at some point. And have a little bit more time. But today, really, about was about recreating that walk I did with my dad. And, <coughs> and uh, get a little bit of footage of, of um, of St Mary's hey, it's throwing it down so Mount St Mary's had a school attached to secondary school the white building you can see through the trees and then there seems to be that modern and bit that's been built. Old mill here. So you could get a feel for what it was. It was just mills and houses. Factories and houses. Leeds has 80 some public spaces run by Leeds Parks. This is just one of them. So the city there, and, and this was social housing, I think, when were these built? The 50s maybe? Saxton Gardens. Um, when the unsanitary terraced houses were demolished, they built these 
inside toilets, lifts. Um, but then they've demolished some of those and built some private ones at the back. I always imagine this is why the area further across was called Richmond Hill. We're still in the bank here. With its original railings. Where the looks are they? Not if you've ever noticed a lot of places that had railings don't have railings and I got told that's because they were all taken down for the again for the war effort. Um, but this is the old part of Mount St Mary's School. Not my school. Areas just up there, and the new flats here. That's where we came. Uh, this is where we're going. I need to get my skates on now, guys. It's not going to be late for work. Just got talking to somebody though, had a nice chat for about 10 minutes. I was wondering if these steps were still here and they still are. I think this building was part of the church complex. There were big old um, big old organisations in the city. But yeah, steps up to this church, steps up to St Saviour's. The lady did confirm that this has been sold and it's going to become flats and parts of it has had to be or is going to be uh, demolished because it's in such a dangerous state because it's been left for so long And you can't see down there. As I say, it's been saved, so that's that's good. And it'll be still here, I imagine, in another hundred years. I'm okay, don't need to panic, seven minutes past eight. by the looks of it and the Mount Learning Centre I can't remember what this is called <laughs> Hi guys A little bit warm now. Put my big coat on. Thought it was uh, well, it was cold. It was 12 when I set off, but we've had a rain shower. It's probably about 16 now, so it's very humid. 
I'm really glad I came. It's been a great morning. Um, just, I'm, I think on a Sunday, I work on a Sunday, so I think I'm going to do these Sunday morning walks, at least in the summer. I'm going to have to come out really early to do them. Um, I say, this was never a through road, it always just went up to the church. Um, but now, as you can see, there's, there's modern housing, I think they're like housing associations. Yeah, you could probably get into the church that way if you're so inclined. Lady was saying that there's some talk that they're going to move the uh, postal code. This is LS9 which for estate agents doesn't achieve the same. I think that's all the grounds of the of the church there. Yeah. LS9 doesn't achieve the same financial um, gains as LS1 apparently. LS1's the city centre. So there's some talk of changing this postal code at this side to um, LS1. <laughs> what people will do for money. Well, you have that feeling of a, a stranger in my own town here. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you when I recognise my surroundings. <laughs> yeah, so we're nearly back at Railway Street, we've, we've walked down here. Just wanted to say that on, on the right here, where these houses are, um, when I was growing up there was a old army barracks, stables. Um, it was empty and we used to play in it, but I distinctly remember that the, there were stables um, that's Railway Street. I'll put the link to the walk down there. Um, it's way back up to Accommodation Road. It sound like there's a train. Oh yeah, an Azuma. One for the train formers before we go. The Neville Hill Rail Depot's about a mile that way. And as I said, I'll put the link to that on the screen below. But yeah, the rail depot's up there, so the trains, it's a Sunday, but it should be quiet. But we're lucky, we've got two. They'll be headed out for the day. Got three, I think. No, two. Two Azumas. Does this one get to go now? Oh, that one's gone. You'd imagine so, wouldn't you? How long does it have to wait though? You can guarantee, can't you, that I'm gonna go I have to go, but as soon as I do go, let's try it yourself. All right, guys. Zoom. 
was going. Just had the uh, points change. I have a few minutes, so I'm just waiting to see if this second train starts. Oh no, that is over there, that platform. Can you see the concrete platform? Just, just across there on the right. Yeah, it's here. LNER Azuma. It's disabled. It's got a carriage in the um, in the engine car. I noticed that. Does it say on it? I can't read it. London Kings Cross, maybe. There's the more than one. Well, that was a bonus. Old pubs, old churches. Bit of rain. Bit of sun to intercity trains. Thanks for watching guys, that's just about it. Almost back at my start point. It was a, I'm pleased I made the effort and came out. I can't believe it's 59 years since I walked up here with, with my dad to see our new house. And as I say, I've, I've no regrets. It's, um, it was a good area to live then. I'm sure it's a good area to live now and it's helped make me uh, what I am. So, uh, went for a drink of coffee in the car, that's the first job, and a couple of biscuits. <laughs> but, hope you did enjoy the video. Please do drop me a comment if you know the area or if you've got any comments about this type of video. I'm not sure I'll be able to change them too much a snazzy smart music and Netflix type documentaries videos aren't really what I'm after um, but anyway let me know what you think and let me know if you've got any comments about anything we've seen today um, and I will try to get out a little bit more uh, on a Sunday Morning and do a few more of these city walks. Um, but until the next time, um, I'll say cheerio.